Top Secrets, Where Ideas Take Off As the legendary Steve Jobs once said, your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. We've heard successful CEOs talk about their startup secrets, but what about the sleepless nights and heartbreaking mornings? What about the difficult decisions and lonely periods that go unnoticed? Pay close attention as we deconstruct Ben Horowitz's The Hard Thing About Hard Things to learn what it takes to develop a strong organization and become a world-class leader. Horowitz is a general partner of Andreessen Horowitz, a venture capital firm he co-founded a decade ago. As of April 2022, the firm managed $28.2 billion in assets. Ben co-founded and served as CEO of Opsware, previously LoudCloud, which was acquired by Hewlett Packard in 2007 for $1.6 billion. He is the author of two best-selling books, The Hard Thing About Hard Things and What You Do Is Who You Are. Today we will focus on the The Hard Thing About Hard Things and discuss three important lessons. Lesson 1. The CEO's voice should be the first one heard in times of emergency. Many startups try to conceal crises or problems in order to fix them quietly while their staff believe everything is okay. There are two reasons why this is a bad move. 1. Information about a crisis always leaks through, so eventually, your employees will find out. 2. By attempting to handle the problem alone and in private, you are not allocating the resources that it deserves and requires. Assume you're being sued for a technical flaw in your product. You might try to get an excellent lawyer, go to court, and fight the charges. However, Someone will eventually spill the beans about your trip to the courthouse, leading all of your staff to stress and wonder if they will be fired. What if, instead, you were the first to break the awful news, and you did it as fast as possible? You may gather everyone and just state that you're in trouble. This will not only lighten your load as CEO, but it will also help get the problem into the hands of those who are best suited to solve it. Now an engineer may investigate what went wrong and determine whether it was a product malfunction or if the product was simply used incorrectly. Don't underestimate your employee's ability to handle the truth. If you are honest and straightforward about terrible news, your entire company will benefit. Lesson 2. There are two kinds of CEOs. Horowitz identifies two intriguing distinctions of CEOs as ones and twos. The strategic CEOs, visionaries, and those who excel at charting a course for the company are the ones. They enjoy making strategic decisions and aren't hesitant to pivot the startup when necessary. Bill Gates is an excellent example of the one. Twos prefer execution and management than researching and making judgments. They are the practical CEOs who enjoy implementing, leading a team, and getting things done. To genuinely excel, a corporation must have an abundance of both traits, so if you're a one, learn some two abilities and vice versa. These are what Horowitz refers to as functional ones, and they are vital to have as executives as well. If your marketing director is a functional one, she'll be fine with making strategic decisions, but rather implement what you say is important to the company. So, either learn the component you don't do well or attract the right individuals for the task. Lesson 3. Being able to tolerate uncertainty is a hallmark of a successful CEO. As CEO, you'll always be held accountable for everything, whether it's the failed new product or Steve's spat with Sally over the last piece of cake. You may just get used to being uncomfortable. The job of a CEO is unnatural in many respects, and you'll often have to go against your instincts, therefore one of the best things you can do is practice leaving your comfort zone ahead of time. The magic happens when you step outside of your comfort zone. Now go forth and create some magic. So remember. The CEO's voice should be the first one heard in times of emergency. There are two kinds of CEOs but you should aim to be a functional one. And finally what makes a great CEO is to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Thank you so much for watching our video. Click the like button now to support our channel and click subscribe if you want to get notified each time we post a new summary.